All right, welcome to Washington Exec's video series where we talk to GovCon executives about the current trends and topics impacting industry. Um, I'm Ma Amanda Ziede, senior reporter with Washington Exec, and today I'm joined by Brigadier General Greg Tuhill, the president of AppGate Federal. Thank you so much for joining me today, Greg. Hello, Amanda. All right, so we're here to talk about the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on cybersecurity and the vulnerabilities associated with an increasingly remote workforce. So Greg, uh, you were the first federal chief information security officer. You've obviously held various cybersecurity and IT leadership positions within government and industry. And now you're on the federal arm of a cybersecurity and analytics services provider. So how are you seeing the current pandemic impact cybersecurity in the federal space? Well, that's an excellent question because a lot of folks uh, don't realize the broadening of the risk exposure that we've had with the massive uh, work from home and the sudden deployment of folks from the office to their home systems. A couple of uh, major risks that are out there uh, include, one, uh, we've sent folks home, not necessarily fully prepared for that work from home, and the cybersecurity things that we want them to do and be aware of as far as threats go. Two is, is we increase our risk exposure with more and more folks having to come in using their home devices. The BYOD is now a reality because government uh, did not necessarily have the means of issuing everybody a laptop and saying, okay, here, here you go, it's pre-configured, go home and use this. So a lot of folks are using their home systems and we're seeing attackers trying to hit uh, at home emails with uh, phishing messages and other ways to gain control of those home devices. And then when the employees try to get back into government resources, the bad guys can see what's going on there. So that's a certain uh, risk as well. And then we're also seeing, uh, particularly for the, uh, the military and those government agencies that do classified work, we're seeing a limitation in the effectiveness of that workforce because folks could not do classified work uh, from home. So uh, many organizations are now finding that they've had to, on the fly, create some business continuity plans and uh, procedures in order to keep uh, those folks that are doing classified work gainfully employed or to retain them until they can, in fact, be put back on the line. And with an increasingly with an increasing reliability on commercial networks for uh, both government employees and GovCon employees to work from home. Uh, is there an, an expanded vulnerability space having to rely on those commercial networks? Well, you know, frankly, when you were in garrison in the military, on that base doing your work, or in, in your government agency doing your work there, you already were reliant on those commercial communications providers because all the long haul circuits in essence are provided under contract by those commercial carriers anyway. But as we've pivoted to home, uh, those same commercial car uh, carriers, they're saving the day by providing connectivity. However, not everybody has the same connectivity. So here in the metropolitan DC area, we've arguably got some of the best connectivity in the world for our DC based employees. But out in rural areas where you have, you know, like an Air Force base that, uh, you know, you, and you do keep Air Force bases away from the major metropolitan areas for noise and other things. Uh, and, you know, as you take a look at other agencies that are out there, their employees are all around the country. All 50 states and the different territories working with the tribal communities and the like, and they may not have that metropolitan area internet connection capability. Those folks are, in fact, hindered when it comes to performance in those areas that don't have that kind of internet uh, connection. But from a cyber standpoint, denial of service because you don't have infrastructure, that's an immediate concern for most. But I think as we've taken a look at the overall performances of the .gov and the .mil, uh, both .gov and .mil are maintaining essential levels of service for most functions. Great. So do you have any cyber hygiene best practices or cybersecurity advice for your industry and federal colleagues during this time? Absolutely. Uh, the first one is, is remember that even if you're working from home, that the f uh, bad actors are out there and they're trying to gain control so that they can uh, see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. 
Your information that you're working on in the government has value to people and you need to make sure that you're protecting it well. Even if it's not your government system and it's on your home system, you should be following the same practices or even tougher adherence to some of those practices. So good cyber hygiene is critically important now in the home environment. You also need to make sure, especially if you're in a BYOD environment, keep your system updated with all the patching on the operating systems, the applications and the like. A system that is up to date with all of its patches and is properly configured presents a much harder target for bad actors. And then uh, third, particularly with the BYOD and the home users, there's an active phishing environment coming in where we're seeing bad actors uh, that are going out and sending out blast emails saying, hey, you know, come here, click this link to learn more about COVID-19. Click here to see how your retirement portfolio has been affected by the dip in the economy. And that is a huge attack surface right now. So don't click on those links. And then go to sources of information that are reliable. Go to cdc.gov. Go to your county health uh, agency. Go to reliable locations uh, as opposed to clicking a link to go to someplace where you don't know really where it is. Mm -hmm. And then finally is make sure that you are hardened against the fact that there are sources of misinformation, that there are folks that are out there trying to gain a tactical as well as a strategic advantage during this time of uncertainty. Overall though, IT has been saving the day during this crisis and hopefully enabling the healthcare professionals who are the real heroes as we move forward. Great, and absolutely enabling us to still have conversations like this and share this insightful information. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me today, Greg. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Amanda. All right, connect with you soon.